Cristiano Ronaldo send Portugal into the World Cup semi-final. He can! Welcome to the World Cup in Russia. Look, in the last 16 hours, I have sprained my ankle to the point where I can barely walk. I have missed an assignment worth 10% of my grade. I have puked my guts out in the middle of the gym. I have gotten about three hours of sleep in the last day. I'm struggling right now. It's a rough Monday, but I haven't been uploading a lot because it is finals week and I've been focusing on that. But I wanted to get a video out for you guys today and it's discussing the new World Cup mode. First, we're going to go all the way through what we're expecting from World Cup mode. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about how that's going to affect our trading and the different paths we can go uh, to preserve our coins and make the best of World Cup mode at the same time. But let's go ahead and get started, guys. Make sure to drop a like on this video. That's all I ask. And also subscribe to the channel if you are new. Let's hop into it. First, we'll go through a quick look on the stadiums that are going to be added to the game. Now, you can use these stadiums in all of the FIFA game modes, Ultimate Team Kickoff, and then obviously World Cup mode. So these are all of the stadiums that we'll see in Russia. Uh, you've got St. Petersburg Stadium in St. Petersburg. Pretty good, uh, nice looking stadium, I'd say. Uh, you've got the Fish Stadium in Sochi, which is pretty unique. Then we've got the Ekaterinburg Arena, uh, which kind of, in a way, sort of looks like Atletico Madrid Stadium. Uh, a lot smaller, though, um, and not really with all the colors that Atletico Madrid has inside their uh, Metropolitan Stadium, I believe it's called. You've got Kazan Arena in Kazan, pretty average stadium. Nizhny Novgorod Stadium. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right at all. Then here's my favorite, actually, Rostov Arena. I really like this stadium. It only holds 45,000, but it does look really, really nice. I think that uh, the games that are played in here are going to look really, really nice. They've got the Russia colors um, and really, really just show the theme of the, of the World Cup right there. Uh, then we've got Samara Arena in Samara, pretty average stadium there. We've got Mordovia Arena in Saransk. Uh, we've got Volgograd Arena, um, and then we've got Spartak Stadium. This one holding 45,000 as well. One of these ones towards the bottom hold a lot. Uh, you've got Kalingrad Stadium, capacity 35,000. Luzhniki Stadium in Moscow. This one holds 80,000, so probably uh, the final might be played here. I'm not sure if they've already decided where the final is going to be played, but this one holding 80,000 would not be a terrible choice. So those are all the stadiums we'll see in FIFA. I thought I'd get that out of the way early uh, just to show you guys if you hadn't seen it yet. Um, and then we're going to go and hop into the new features that we'll also see during World Cup mode FIFA 18. I've been getting tons of questions on this page of EA Sports website explaining the new World Cup update game modes because it is quite uh, confusing. So I'm going to try to explain it to you guys best of my ability. And if you have any questions still, you can leave them in the comment section below and I'll reply to them. You've got some new World Cup game modes that are unrelated to Ultimate Team. We're just going to kind of skip through that. We've got 2018 World Cup Russia, uh, the custom tournaments. You've got uh, World Cup kickoff. Stuff like that, but we're focused down here on the ultimate team aspect of the game. We've got all new icons. It's going to feature some of the most iconic players from the tournament's history, pretty much guaranteeing Ronaldinho to have some sort of icon 
for the World Cup mode. But you could also expect players like Miroslav Klosa to be involved, given the fact that he is the all-time leading goal scorer in Ultimate Team, uh, or for uh, World Cup, that is. You could also expect players like Carbajal, Matthias, and Buffon, possibly, to get uh, icon cards, even though Buffon technically isn't retired yet. He won't be in World Cup game mode because he's not going to be. Uh, obviously, Italy didn't make the World Cup. He probably wouldn't have been on the roster either way because I believe he was retiring after the qualifiers uh, nonetheless. But we could also see Buffon in there uh, if they do decide to add players from teams that didn't qualify. But then again, Carbajal uh, and Matthias because they've played five World Cups. Uh, which is more than anybody else, along with Buffon, who is the other player who's played in five World Cups. So players like that is what we should expect as icons in this World Cup mode, which is going to be super cool because we didn't have that in the last World Cup mode back in FIFA 14. Uh, we've got a chemistry system that is the exact same as FIFA 14. You can link your players within their nationalities and then their confederations instead of league and club. The confederation being, you know, South America, uh, you know, Argentinians will link with Brazilians. Um, then you'll also have, you know, Mexico, uh, Mexicans leave, uh, linking with Costa Ricans, stuff like that. That's going to be where the links are. But based off of this chemistry system, the only way to get a green link is actually through players from the same team, from the same nation. So you're probably going to see a lot of players with, you know, half German, half Brazilian squad, stuff like that, because that's really how you get the chemistry, at least based off of previous years. And then you'll also see those icons, which will probably link with everyone. Then we've got the FIFA World Cup player pool featuring up-to-date squads from every qualified nation with refreshed ratings. Um, and they're going to be dynamic as well. So you're going to be able to pack all the players that are in the 23-man roster for every single uh, country that qualified for the World Cup. So only those 32 teams that qualified will be in this game mode. So we're not going to see USA. We won't see Italy. We won't see Chile. We won't see Netherlands. Um, but we'll see all the teams that did qualify and the, only the 23-man roster of those teams. Uh, these dynamic items, they basically work as OTWs. If you pack, let's say, Messi. Let's say you pack Messi... Uh, he's Argentinian. You throw him in your squad. He's 93 rated, I believe his base card is this year. He's 93 rated, and he scores three goals in a group stage match. He ends up getting an upgrade uh, for that performance. He ends up getting a man of the match card in regular ultimate team. That World Cup mode card is going to match the rating of the man of the match card. So if he gets a 95 rated man of the match card, his card automatically jumps from a 93 to a 95. Last time in FIFA 14, he was a 94 base card. He got a few upgrades all the way up to 98 rated. So everybody had a 98 rated Messi if they had Messi in the World Cup mode. Although uh, Ronaldo, on the other hand, he was 92 as a base. He never got upgraded. So he was 92 rated throughout World Cup mode. Then we've got the double pack incentive. This might be confusing, but essentially for every pack you buy in Ultimate Team for the FIFA World Cup mode, you're going to get that pack again in regular Ultimate Team. So there's absolutely no reason for you to buy a 7.5k pack on the market in regular Ultimate Team because what you can do is you can open that pack, you can buy that pack in FIFA World Cup mode, you get a 7.5k pack, you get those World Cup players, and then you back out of World Cup mode, you go to Ultimate Team, you're going to have that 7.5k pack to open as well. So essentially, this World Cup mode is going to be a branch of Ultimate Team, but it's not really going to be anything to do with the transfer market or anything like that. If you go into World Cup mode, you will only play against other people in World Cup mode. If you back out of World Cup mode, you can't bring that squad to Ultimate Team and play in Foot Champions or anything like that, or the Daily Knockout Tournament, or in Divisions. Uh, there will be a just World Cup-themed uh, game mode and you're going to go into the group stage if you win two games of the group stage you go into the knockout round you make it farther you're probably going to get better rewards better packs better players i believe last year every single time you won a game you got one more player into your world cup club and after my first game that i won last time in 2014 fifa 14 i ended up getting ribbery in that first pack so it's actually pretty good packs uh, it's a lot easier to pull some higher rated players so that you can collect every single card in World Cup mode, which is one of the most fun things that I've seen in FIFA 
Ultimate Team history uh, was FIFA 14 World Cup mode, and I'm glad that it's similar to what it was last time. Although it might be a little bit of pay to play, you can use your coins, and given the fact that you do get two packs in return, it's a little bit more worth it. Then again, in FIFA 14, the market was much more inflated, so you had you know Ronaldo going for four million coins at this point in the game. Instead, he's going for 800,000 this year. So if the packs are the same price, which I expect them to be, it's not going to be as worth it to buy it with coins this year. Uh, it is going to be a lot more tough to collect all of the cards, especially if you don't want to spend any money on the game like me. It's going to be a lot more tough. But if you grind out the game modes, if you grind out the... Uh, you know, the packs uh, that you get in return for rewards uh, and then spend a little bit of coinage, you might be able to collect all of the cards. So you've got a couple more uh, Ultimate Team game modes. And the reason it says Ultimate Team game modes here as opposed to all of these is because all of these are uh, related to the World Cup mode, which is, again, a branch of Ultimate Team. This is going to be unrelated to the World Cup mode. You're going to see single player and online tournaments, probably DKT, stuff like that. Uh, single player and online draft um, is going to be affected by World Cup. It'll be uh, somewhat different. I'm not sure what they're going to do for that yet. And then obviously we're going to see some squad building challenges based off of uh, the World Cup as well, which is not going to be related to World Cup mode. It's just to do with the World Cup update. Finally, you've got uh, FaZe Ramus who actually brought up a good point on Twitter, he said the best thing to do is pack suicide the first day of World Cup mode so you get packs on normal FIFA Ultimate Team which still have a chance at Team of the Season players. What he means by this is May 29th is when World Cup mode comes out which should be during the last week of Team of the Season which is the big EA Team of the Season with Ronaldo, Messi, all the big ones. Essentially all the big Team of the Seasons will be in the final Team of the Season which is called the EA community team of the season or something along those lines uh you'll still have a chance of packing those team of the season players uh even if you open the packs in world cup mode so you kind of get a double dip there so i'd say yes the best time to do the packs is early in world cup mode assuming that is during the first week of the world cup mode guys but uh that's gonna be it for this video essentially hopefully i covered all the info you needed um really when you think about it from a trading standpoint it's not going to be great. It's not going to help your coin total in FIFA Ultimate Team. I'm probably going to do it on my main account, not on my Trade Into Glory account, back on our old, old Trade Into Glory account, the original one. I'm probably going to do World Cup mode on that account, but on our Trade Into Glory Season 2 account, I'm not going to. Realistically, it's not going to make you coins on FIFA Ultimate Team. It's only going to take coins away from you, especially if you use coins to open those packs. So, really, you don't want to be spending the coins if you really want to save your coins in FIFA Ultimate Team. But if you want to have fun with the game mode, that's kind of what you got to do unless you want to spend a ton of money. And, really, that's not what we're about here on this channel is buying FIFA points. We don't do that. Uh, we really just grind our way up through trading. Um, so, if you guys are interested in learning more about that, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Drop a like on the video if it did help you guys out. And I'll see you guys in the next video, which will hopefully be out tomorrow with a Trading to Glory episode, bringing that back after not uploading for a couple days. So I'll see you guys then. Peace out.